fruitarianism. What is fruitarianism? To me, fruitarianism is a way of life. It's more than a diet, but it places great emphasis on diet for sure, but it extends far beyond diet. So the fruitarian diet is one thing, and then the fruitarian way of life is another. Uh, but the fruitarian diet is a diet comprised of fruits, and some vegetables, and some nuts and seeds. But for the most part, it's all about the fruit. Whole, fresh, ripe, raw fruit. Preferably juicy fruit. When you're eating a really good fruitarian diet, you won't feel the need to have vegetables or nuts and seeds. If, you're, if the fruit in your fruitarian diet is lower quality, you're probably going to want some vegetables and nuts and seeds to make up for the lower quality fruit that you're having. But if you're having the best fruit in the world, you're not going to want the vegetables, you're not going to want the nuts and seeds. So that, to me, is how I view a fruitarian diet. It's a diet that's comprised of mostly delicious fruit. You can still be considered a fruitarian even if you're not eating 100% raw there are a lot of people out there who eat mostly fruit and then they have some cooked food and they still call themselves a fruitarian. I think it's okay to call yourself whatever you want. You can call yourself a fruitarian even if you're eating an apple a day. I just think it's important to get the word out there about fruitarianism because most people have never even heard of fruitarianism. And so as long as people are talking about it, I think that's a good thing. So if you want to adopt the label of fruitarian, even if you're not eating 100% raw like myself, even if you're not eating 99.9% .9 of your calories from fruit like myself, still go ahead and do it. Call yourself a fruitarian to get the label out there, get the word out there. And whenever somebody asks what is fruitarianism, you can explain that it's a diet that's comprised primarily of fruits and some vegetables and nuts and seeds. But again, that's just the diet aspect. On a whole, I think fruitarianism, the way of life, it really, it's about living in line with nature's design. It's about being as natural as you feel comfortable being. It's about feeling a connection with the plants and with the trees and with the planet. It's about trying to go back to being that animal that we all are. I think a lot of people say that there's animals and then there's humans. Humans and animals, as if humans are not animals. And then people also say, well, when we go out into nature, not realizing that humans are nature, we are nature, we're a part of it. And it's this disconnect that we have from nature and from animals that I think is causing a lot of problems on the planet. For just, there's a lot of destruction happening on the planet right now, cutting down rainforests and, and pulling oil and, and spreading garbage and waste and toxins around the planet, spraying chemtrails. There's a lot of gnarly stuff going on on the planet right now. I think it's because people have a disconnect, not realizing that what they do to the planet, they're doing to themselves. And it's also a lack of that unity consciousness where people aren't realizing that what they do to themselves is actually affecting everyone. What I do to myself and the way I feel right now is affecting everyone. And so... I think it's, yeah, it's important to come back to that unity consciousness and realize that how you treat yourself is really how you treat everyone. And how you treat others is really how you treat yourself. So with fraternism, when you're eating the best food possible, when you're, when you're eating foods that you know are going to allow you to feel your best, that emanates outwards. And other people can pick up on that. Other people can benefit from that. So that's, uh, that's a little intro to fraternism, what it is, and... Uh, And why some people do it but I want to explain why I got into it and how I got into it I, I got into fraternism when I was looking for a, a cure for my acne I would google every day cure for acne cure for acne cure for acne so I had acne all over my chest I had acne all over my face I had acne all over my back like zits galore baby zits galore mountainous terrain of acne my face chest and back pictures to prove it before and afters to prove it. Look, I'm a walking, talking after right here. But I was desperately looking for a cure for my acne and nothing was working. I was going for the potions and the lotions and the tonics and the creams and the pills and the potions, but nothing worked. And I spent many, many dollars, hundreds of dollars on, on different potions, lotions and creams. Nothing was working. So I went to diet and lo and behold, 
I realized that, wow, the food I eat actually affects the way I look. What I put in, it actually comes out. And my first experience with finding the correlation between diet and acne was when I cut out dairy. When I cut out dairy, my acne stopped being so inflamed. And it was amazing. I'd, I'd cut out dairy, the acne inflammation would go down, but it was still like, still very prevalent. And then I reintroduced dairy and the acne would just flare out again. I was like, wow, okay, dairy is a, is a direct cause on my acne and how bad it looks. So I'll cut that out for sure. But what's next? How do I get rid of like all this like scarring? Then I cut out gluten. I heard gluten worked if you cut out gluten. So I cut out gluten and that had a major effect too on the, um, on the discoloration of the scars, on the, the purpleness and the redness of the scars. When I would introduce de uh, gluten, wheat products, the scars would look really bad. And then I cut the gluten out and the scars would clear up. They'd like start to fade. I said, like, wow, this is great. But again, there was still like some, some acne coming out. I still hadn't got to the cause. I was altering like how it looked, but I still wasn't getting to the root cause of like, what was causing this, these zits to come out. And then I uh, discovered the raw food diet. I heard about the raw food diet. I was like, wow, if I'm just eating raw foods, like I cut out dairy, I found great benefit. I cut out gluten, I found great benefit. What if I just went raw? So I f did more research on raw food diet, found out about David Wolf and, and the, the high fat program, all the nuts and seeds and the gourmet stuff. And I hopped on board. And I remember going, going up to my cabin one time, up to the lake, into the interior in British Columbia, to the wilderness. And I brought along with me, uh, remember this is my first time going into raw, so bear with me here. I brought with me a big bag of pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds. And I brought with me a bunch of avocados. And I brought with me a bunch of uh, olives. And I brought with me a b bunch of oranges as well. I figured I need some hydration. So I was mixing and matching everything. I'd take a handful of nuts and seeds, I'd take some avocado, take some olives, take some oranges, and just make a meal of all those. And uh, that night I got so sick. I was like, I'm gonna go raw, I'm gonna go raw, I'm gonna feel great. But I felt so sick that day. I was like, what's happening? Why am I feeling sick? And then I just bleh, threw up even, I was so sick. I'm like, whoa, man. Like all these nuts and seeds were coming up out of my, my vomit. I felt horrible. And, uh, I was, I was so turned off by the idea of any more nuts and seeds. But the next morning I woke up and I saw the bag of oranges there. And I was like so attracted to the oranges. And I was like, I just want to eat oranges for breakfast. So I had a big mono meal of oranges. And I was like, wow, I feel great. I feel clear. I feel like pristine. This is amazing. That was cool. But it didn't really click right away and figure like, okay, that's it. I'm just going to eat fruit. It didn't happen that quickly. Things take time. But I realized how much better I felt on just fruit versus how I felt eating nuts and seeds and avocados and olives and the high fat program. So that, that was a big um, seed that was planted in my life experience there. And I did, went home, did more research, and I found out, hey, there's something called 80-10-10. There's something called uh, 811 raw vegan. And I didn't know what that meant, really. I just figured it was lots of fruits and vegetables. They didn't really talk too much about nuts and seeds. It was all about fruits and vegetables, raw, raw, raw. And uh, I didn't know if it was like you know 80% fruit, 10% vegetables, or 80% vegetables, 10% fruit. I remember asking that on a form. I was like, does 8, 10, 10 mean 80% vegetables or 80% fruit? I could probably still find that form post somewhere. It's like on the internet somewhere in some archive, I'm sure. Um, and someone answered, that, like, it's 80% carbs, 10% fat, 10% protein. I was like, oh, okay. And I uh, proceeded to get the 80-10-10 book by Doug Graham. I proceeded to find the 30 Bands a Day website. And I just found out what this high-carb network, this high-carb community online. And it was then that I jumped on board, ate just basically fruits and vegetables. Too many vegetables at the start for sure. I had a lot of gas. Just eating a lot of cauliflower and broccoli and, and like sprouts, you know mung beans and stuff, stuff that doesn't digest, stuff that's going to give you gas. And I just remember taking like enzymes like Beano before each of my vegetable meals because I was like, oh, that'll get rid of the gas. But now, eating a fruit diet, there's no gas. Uh, at the time, I didn't know anything. So I'm eating all this raw, 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 and then I go to Hawaii for a couple weeks, and I'm eating just basically papayas and mangoes and bananas, and my acne went away in like two weeks. 
just boom, disappeared. I remember looking in the mirror for the first time and just not recognizing my back. I was like almost in tears. I found it. I figured I found it. I'm going to be that guy who dedicates his life to helping people cure acne. That was going to be like my, my thing. That was going to be my, my angle. Like, I did it. I can help anyone do it. Uh, but once I cleared up my acne, that was really just the tip of the iceberg. And I, I, looking back, I know why the acne got cured. Because when you eat just fruit, you give your body a chance to detoxify. Fruit isn't doing the detoxification. The body's always detoxing itself. But fruit allows the body to detoxify. It's a big misnomer. People think, oh, if I ate this fruit, then it'll, it'll detox me. Eating this will detox me. Foods don't detox you. The body detoxes itself. Food merely allows or interferes with the healing process that's always going on in the body. So, I cured my acne, and naturally, I was like, what's next? Where do I go from here? And I realized how much better I was feeling overall. Like, it wasn't just the acne. The acne was was a symptom, sure, of, of being clean on the inside, but I was also experiencing higher highs than ever before. And my lows weren't that low at all. I found my mood was so much better. I found my energy levels throughout the day were so much better. I found my digestion was so much better. Smooth digestion, no gas, no stinky poops, no stinky farts. Digestion was so much better. And my sleep was just flawless. I get into these deep, deep sleeps. Very easily, I fall asleep much quicker, eating a fruitarian diet, and I wake up feeling much fresher, which again led to more energy, led to better moods, led to better digestion. It's a cycle. So those are, are, are some of the reasons why I still do it to this day. The acne went away. The, the reason why I started cure, to cure my acne that, that went away after just a couple of weeks. I needed some other reason to, to hold on to this, and I found all those benefits: the, the the mood, the energy, the digestion, and the sleep. But now. After doing this diet for so many years, I realized that I'm also doing it now, not just for those personal reasons, I'm also doing it for people around me, to benefit humanity, to benefit my family, to benefit my friends. I'm a much better person when I'm eating a fruit diet. Much better. Do you want to hang around someone whose mood is crap? No. You want to hang around someone whose mood is high vibe, right? Do you want to hang around someone who's low energy all the time, who's complaining about being tired? No. You want to hang around someone who's got all the energy in the world and go, go, go. But when it's time to sleep, they can sleep. And again, do you want to hang out with someone who has sleep issues, who can't fall asleep? They're just laying up all night distressing? No. And do you want to hang, out someone or hang around someone who has bad digestion, who stinks? No. So all these personal benefits, they also benefit everyone around me. And I'm kind of like a walking, talking advertisement saying like, hey, all these benefits that I have, you can have them too. You're a human. And humans are designed to eat fruit. So if you eat fruit, you're going to have all these benefits as well. And it, it comes up in, in conversation very often with people I'm just meeting. Like definitely like within the first day or two, they figure out I'm a fruitarian. And uh, a lot of questions come up. And some of the questions people have relate to certain nutrients. They say, like, where do you get your B12? Or where do you get your uh, vitamin D? Or where do you get vitamin D? Or do you get your calcium, whatever? Where do you get this and that, cholesterol? And where do you get your protein? Of course, that one's huge. And I'm able to dissect these answers and ask them some questions back themselves. Like, well, you asked me where I get my protein. Where do you get your protein? And then they're usually stumped. They're like, well, meat. And then I ask, like, well, what happens when your body ingests protein? Do you know what it does with the protein? They don't have a clue. Most people don't have a clue what happens when you ingest protein. What happens, since you're asking, is when your body ingests protein from an animal, it has to break it down into amino acids. And then it reuptakes it into its own human form of protein. But first it needs to break down the protein into amino acids. That requires a lot of energy. But when you're eating just plants, when you're eating just lettuce and spinach and, and apples and oranges and carrots and peaches and plums and mangoes and nectarines, you're getting straight amino acids. You're cutting out the middleman. You don't need to break down any proteins and reuptake it into amino acids. You're consuming direct amino acids from the plants. So when people ask me where do I get my protein, I honestly tell them I don't get protein. I don't eat protein. But I eat amino acids from plants and my body immediately turns those amino acids into protein. And I could go on and dissect each of those questions they have about B12 and calcium and vitamin D and all sorts of things like that, but this video is not for that. Um, 
But generally, people are curious. They want to know where I get these nutrients and how it's possible and how long I've been doing it, that sort of thing. And um, then they want to know, like, if it's possible for them to do it. And then a lot of them want to do it right away. I remember I met this magician, Daniel Rosenfeld. Amazing musician, amazing magician, even. Fantastic magician. Blows your mind away, man. It'll blow your mind if you ever get to see Daniel in person. Met him at the airport in Denmark, coming home after a woods, uh, coming home after the Danish Fresh Food Festival, and he uh, introduced himself as a musician, showed me some some of his music. I was like, "Wow, that's really good." And then he like, I was like, "Are you also a magician?" Because he had like some magic box or something, or maybe he told me I'm a magician also. And I was like, "Well, would you be able to like show me a trick or something?" I figured he wouldn't show me any tricks. And, she showed me a couple of magic tricks on the plane, and I remember, like, I couldn't look at him. I was like, hold on, hold on, I can't look away, I can't look at you right now. Like, he was just freaky, he just scared me how, how powerful his magic was, what it effect it had on me. And then we got to talking a bit, and he found out I was fruitarian, and he's like, oh, that's so cool, I want to do that, I'm going to do it right away, I'm going to start, like, right after this flight type thing. And that's people's approach, typically, they want to do it right away, and I was just like, you don't need to go, tw you don't need to do it right away, you don't need to do it overnight. You don't need to do a cold turkey. I recommend like easing into it. Even just being vegan would be a huge step, you know? But a lot of people, they, they find out what's good, they want to do it right away. But wanting to become a fruitarian right away, as natural as that might be for those who want to improve themselves, it's kind of like wanting to become a marathoner overnight by just getting up off the couch and going for a marathon run right away without building up first, running a kilometer, running a 5K, running a 10K, running a half marathon. Becoming fruitarian is kind of like being a marathon runner. Like, it requires a lot of adaptation. Your stomach has to be able to stretch to accommodate all the fruit volume. That's a big one because a, this much cooked food, this small amount of cooked food right now, let's say this is a thousand calories. Let's say it's like uh, potatoes or rice or something. You cram it all together, you get a thousand calories of cooked food right there. Your stomach doesn't need to expand to fit that in, it just plops right in. It's very, very tiny volume. But it's a thousand calories, it's really dense. But with fruit, to get this, to get a thousand calories, you're gonna need like this much volume. And most people's stomach, they can't accommodate that much volume. I can't. Long-term fruitarians can. But newbies, they cannot accommodate this much volume for just a thousand calories. So they're like, oh, like I'm, I'm too full. And physically, they're too full. But they get full on this much, not this much. And this much is only like 500 calories. So they're they're, they're not getting enough calories. So they feel full, but they feel tired. They're not getting enough calories. So it's important to give your body months to be able to adapt to accommodate a thousand calories worth of fruits so that you can get in all the calories, all the nutrients that you need, all the energy that you need. And that's a that's a big issue with people. I sit down and have a fruit meal with people, and I eat like twice as fast and twice as much, and I'm done. I'm full. I'm satisfied. They eat half as much as me, and they're full already. And these are like big eaters. These are people who normally with cooked food they could eat just as much as me. Maybe I could, actually, maybe I could eat more because I could fit on more volume, but I feel like crap if I did, so I don't. But normally these people have no problems eating enough calories because it's all cooked food. It's very dense, compact. But with fruit, they just they can't. After even just like half a meal, what I consider half a meal, they're full. And so that's just not sustainable. It's not sustainable. You're going to end up getting hungry. You're going to end up wanting to binge. You're going to end up wanting to give it up altogether and quit. So I recommend easing into fruitarianism. That's a big tip for beginners right there. Ease into it. Give your body a couple months, even a couple of years to fully master it. A lot of people reckon they can just do a cleanse and then they can be fruitarian right away. Doing a cleanse is good, but eating a fruit diet really is enough. Eating a fruit diet, that will be your cleanse. Let the fruit diet be your cleanse. Don't think you can like, you know, speed things up and cut corners by doing like a quick, quick fast or something and all of a sudden your addictions go away. All of a sudden your old habits go away. Old habits don't go away like that. Even when people are on their deathbed, even when people's lives are on the line, they can't just get rid of old habits. People who know they're dying of lung cancer, they just can't quit smoking. It's just, it's just too embedded. I mean, they can, but they often don't. Statistically speaking, people who are dying of lung cancer, they keep smoking until they die. Statistically speaking, people who have cancer from, let's say, eating a really horrible diet, even once they're on their deathbed, they're still eating a really horrible diet. They just can't seem to... Stop eating the crappy food, even when they know that the raw food diet is out there, even when they know a vegan diet is a viable option. They just keep eating that crap food that caused the cancer in the first place. And I'm not saying all cancer is caused by diet, but a large amount of the cancers out there are caused by diet. And same with people who know that they're at risk for a heart attack. 
they're still consuming too much cholesterol. But they know it's the cholesterol that's causing that risk for a heart attack, but they still eat the cholesterol. So if when people's lives are on the line and they still can't change their habits, imagine just some luxury thing like feeling better and having better digestion, having better skin and, and having better sleep and having more energy. That's those benefits are amazing. Those benefits are, are worth striving for, but a lot of people they can't just all of a sudden cut out their old habits just for those luxurious benefits. So what it takes, I think, to succeed on a fruitarian diet is three things. First thing someone needs is immense amount of inspiration. Immense amount of inspiration. You can also start with desperation, like I was desperate to get rid of my acne. So either desperation or inspiration, one of the two. They just need something that's going to hold that flame under their but to get them going. So desperation or inspiration to get the ball going. Once they're inspired, once you're inspired, it's important to stock up, to surround yourself with fruit. Go to the store and stock up your kitchen, stock up your fridge, stock up your freezer, stock up your cupboards with the following foods. You want ripe fruit, so you can eat now. You want unripe fruit, so you can eat in a few days. You want frozen fruit, so you can eat when you want to cool down a bit or when you want to make a smoothie or something. And you want fridge fruit, fruit that's kind of like on the verge of being overripe. You just put it in the fridge and it, it lasts an extra week or two. And you want cupboard food, like Armageddon food, in case zombies start coming and you can go to your cupboard and eat, eat a bunch of dates and raisins and dried apricots and things like that. Backup food. Plan B food. So stock up on all those foods. And then, once you're stocked up, you've got to give yourself that time to transition. You've got to give yourself the months and the years to transition. And while you're transitioning, while you're giving yourself the, the time that your body needs to adapt, you're also staying inspired. You're watching these types of YouTube videos that you're watching right now. You're watching interviews of raw fooders online. You're listening to podcasts. You're listening to audiobooks. You're reading books. You're reading Ann Osborne's Path to Paradise. You're reading Doug Graham's 801010. You're reading David Wolf's Nature's First Law. There's a lot of good books out there on raw food. You're reading the book called, oh, the big green book, I always forget the name of it, The Live Food Factor. That book is amazing. It's the Bible, The Live Food Factor. Check that one out. If you, if you want any book on raw, I think The Live Food Factor is a great first start. If you want to take your inspiration to the next level, Ann Osborne's Path to Paradise. And then if you want some, some more scientifically backed, uh, Live Food Factor is very scientifically backed. But if you want some more just a like comprehensive, um, practical advice on how to rock the raw food diet, Doug Graham's 801010 diet. And then if you want some militant, dogmatic, uh, tough love, inspiration, motivation to be raw, then I recommend Nature's First Law by David Wolf, which he apparently like ripped off some other guy, but it's still a good book nonetheless. Um, so those are uh, my bits of advice for people who want to be raw. That's a bit of my story on how I got into raw. and. Uh, Going forward, I want to say that I'm probably always going to be eating a raw food diet for the rest of my life. I see no reason why I'd want to give up great moods and high energy levels and smooth digestion and, and beautiful sleeps um, just for some like cooked convenience. I always felt like crap on cooked food. Uh, I've never been able to feel as good on cooked as I feel on raw. And for me, the way I feel is the most important thing. Nothing is more important than that I feel good. And with raw, it's so easy to feel good. With raw, it's so easy to get into uh, deep meditations. With raw, it's so easy to just keep my my mood at, at a high level. Um, my self-discipline in all areas at a high level. My willpower is always topped up. And I look forward to every meal. I look forward to every meal. Every day I get to eat. I just arrived here in Ecuador a few hours ago. First thing I did, got to Ecuador, got in a taxi. Said, take me to the fruit, homie. We went to the store and we got some dragon fruit and some papayas. And I came back to my apartment here, or my hotel room and mowed down on some uh, dragon fruit and papayas and so good so good so looking forward to them like I'm even excited thinking about what I just ate like in hindsight like looking back it's like wow that was a great meal I got a little bit more too so much to look forward to um, so I love that about raw food or the fruitarian diet I'm always looking forward to every meal and I love how it doesn't control me like it doesn't dictate all my thoughts like I'm not thinking about food when I I'm not eating. I only think about food when I'm talking about food, inspiring people to eat more fruits and vegetables, or when it's actually time to eat. But I remember for me with cooked food, like at the meal, I was thinking about what am I going to make next? What kind of recipe am I going to make next? And just always thinking about food, 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 food. And I'd always like also feel like 
immense hunger, like I need to eat now, like these pulls to go eat. But with raw food, I don't have those, those pulls to go eat. It's just like, when it's time to eat, it's not really like hunger I'm feeling. It's more like, oh, I, I could eat now. Like I'm feeling a bit empty. I could eat. My energy might be a bit low or I'm feeling a bit weak or something. I, I, I could eat. But it's not like I need to eat now. I don't have these ravenous and instantaneous urges to, to go eat like I did when I was eating cooked food. So, yeah, guys, uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. If you want more of these videos, subscribe if you like. And um, come hang out with me and hundreds of other raw food enthusiasts this summer at a few festivals. There's a festival in the UK that I'm going to be attending, the UK Fruit Festival. Uh, link for more information below. And in August at the... New York Woodstock Fruit Festival. If you'd like to see me there and a bunch of other people and come hang out, ask me as many questions as you want and come to a few of my different workshops and come to a few of my different talks and go for some walks, whatever, go for some swims together, work out together, we can definitely do that. The Woodstock Fruit Festival um, is an amazing festival. I've gone every year except one and it's been the best week of my life every single year. So definitely come to that if you'd like. You can save a hundred bucks even with your uh, with your sign up. If it's, if, it's, if it's your first time signing up for Woodstock, you can save a hundred bucks by using the code "Come Fruit Yourself," and uh, I highly recommend coming to Woodstock. If you're a long-term raw vegan or if you're just a beginner raw vegan, either way, you're gonna have the best time of your life. Like, you think you go there for the fruit, but really you go there for the people, and you don't want to leave. Nobody ever wants to leave that festival. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you got something from this vid. Peace, peace. Much love from Ecuador. And last little note here, if you want to come to Costa Rica with me and Doug Graham in February, then drop me a message, send me an email actually at ted at ted is cool with the subject line Costa Rica, and I'll send you more information regarding that. Again, that's hanging out with me and Doug Graham in Costa Rica and a few other really, really cool people for the month of February. Send me a message if you want in on that, and uh, I'll get back to you. Peace.